Grand Peace Online public released on November 14, 2020, and it cost around 350 Robux. Another thing that I want to say is this is the same day that the Little Nas X event happened on Roblox 2. It doesn't relate to the video, but at least you know. Not much is really known about why for you made Grand Peace Online, but what you do need to know is that it is a game based off of the anime called One Piece. When Grand Peace Online initially released, you was presented with the opportunity to grind at certain islands. The game came in with Town of Beginnings, Marine Ford Fort 1, Sandora, Shellstown. You get what I'm trying to say. The game released with a good amount of islands and you was able to grind and just pretty much go fight with friends. It was a really nice time back then because not everybody was too skilled. Everybody was just figuring stuff out and literally everybody was kind of excited and hyped for the game. It was literally a new naval experience. There was also a lot of hype being built up for the game. There was many testers who were showing off stuff. A lot of showcases of devil fruit, skills, black leg, one sword style. ETC, you get what I'm trying to say. Green Peace Online leading up to the release date was hyped up a lot. However, only 37 days after updates were released, Grand Peace Online would go under its first major content update. This was known as Update 1, also known as the Skype update. It came out December 20th, 2020, which was around Christmas time, and this was also a new introduction I haven't seen in any games prior to this, but once this update released, it came alongside an event, and this event was based around Christmas because as you can see from the date, it was December 20th, Christmas was in 5 days, so the Grand Peace Online developers thought it would be cool to release an event, with Christmas coming around this time too. Update 1 brought into like a lot of new additions to the game, it increased the level cap, increased the peli cap, increased all of that basic stuff, there was a new land of sky, and multiple bosses. Some of the bosses you can still see inside the game if you go to, the, to their respective spawn places, like the Thunder God, Bruno, Head Guardian, ETC. There was also new katanas, and the main takeaway from this update was the Gora Gora no Mi. This was the first new legendary fruit introduced inside the game, which also was a Logia. And once this fruit released, it was very, very overpowered. You can see from the old community back then, Goro was literally that number one fruit. If you fought somebody with it, it was toxic and you would most likely lose. Another core feature added inside update 1 for GPO was Ken Boshuko Haki, also known as Observation Haki. What this Haki allows you to do is to dodge certain attacks. You have a bar at the bottom and you can dodge a certain amount of attacks. There is also a new racial ability added for the Skyping race inside Green Peace Online, and this was the ability to glide. It is pretty self-explanatory, it allowed you to glide. But the main part of update 1 which I feel like most people remember was the Christmas event. Now for events inside this game, they usually end on the next major update, but for the Christmas event, it brought in some of the rarest items inside the game, due to it being the first event to take place inside the game. What this event brought was a Santa boss, Santa's hat, elf hat, and one of the rarest items inside the game, the candy cane sword, which I'm sure that you've heard about. Another thing to note is that leading up to update 2's release date, Boyu has been showing off sneak peeks of multiple things that would be coming. He started doing this around this time and as you can see he would show off sneak peeks for the Gravity Devil Fruit, he would show off sneak peeks for Fisherman Karate, and even Arena, since these were all things that were coming to update 2 inside the game. With all of the content that he was showing, the community was getting very, very hyped. You can look inside the comments of all of his old videos. He even did premieres where everybody would just be inside the chat, which he still does to this day. And it was just a really, really nice time because everybody was getting hyped up for these updates. You would see all the content, all the new fruits, and people would start saving and deciding how they're going to get these fruits. Moving on from update one though, what I consider to be the start of Grand Peace Online's Golden Age, we have update 2, also known as the Fishman Island update. What was added was Gravitos Fort, Fishman Cave, new bosses, and new weapons, and they also started adding YouTuber codes around this time. Another takeaway is that the Christmas event from update 1 was also removed. Outside of them adding multiple new things this update, some of the main takeaways from this update were actually the two new Devil Fruits which were Zushi Zushi no Mi and Tori Tori no Mi, also known as Phoenix. These two fruits were highly anticipated, and once they came, they were going inside the market for around six to seven legendary fruits at a time. These fruits were really, really, really hyped up. Like, the whole community wanted them. Everybody was going after them. And outside of that, two more things also came inside this update, which really, really made GPO better, which is why I consider it the start of the Golden Age. 
Arena and trading. Now, when Arena first came out, everybody was playing it. From update one, people were practicing their combos, and you would really only find fights happening on live streams or like a YouTuber's live streaming, and then they just start PvPing with their subscribers. However, Arena changed that. Anybody was able to 1v1 without having to join a private server, and a lot of people were enjoying it. Multiple people were climbing ranked leaderboards. People up, had up to 5,000 wins, 4,000 wins. It was really, really cool. Another thing that came was tradings. There was a trading island back then, and what you had to do was place your fruits on a pad, and you would both click a button, and then once the button reaches zero, you would obviously do the trade. With all of these new additions and balance patches to GPO, you can see why I consider this the start of the golden age. I'm pretty sure most people do too. This update brought in a lot of new content, a lot of stuff to do. New fruits, new stuff to do inside the game with arena and trading. Overall, GPO was heading towards the right direction. Another thing to discuss inside this era was also update 2.5. This update was very, very small, probably one of the worst 0.5 updates to this day. But all this update introduced was Mirror Mirror no Mi, Valentine Island, and the Love Empress, which is also the boss for this said 0.5 update. It dropped the Flower Bouquet and fl Flamingo Boat, and Flower Bouquet is actually still a really good item inside GPO today. But outside of that, that's really all update 2.5 included. Let's have like some small balance patches. Another important thing to note around this time is that crews were actually starting to peak inside Grand Peace and Mod. There was a crew called Jackson Pirates, and they were pretty much known for being clowns, is what I would say. If you look in YouTube, most of the videos surrounded around their name is just people clowning on them, but they were a notorious crew. I'm pretty sure it was a beef between them and Silver Moon Pirates, whose leader is Rover Axe. However, crews were very prominent inside this time. Multiple crew fights, people arguing, beefing, private servers getting raided, ETC, and even the leader of the Jackson Pirates, he was also a tester and he had specs. He had pretty much update 5 stats and update 2, which means he had around 900 to 800 more devil fruit points than everybody, which is why he was kind of like a boss freak back then. The community back then was very, very much there, and you could see it within the crews. Everybody was beefing. It was not, if it was not for that, you would just be in arena, trading. There was a lot of stuff to do, and people really, really did enjoy GPO at this time. And for everybody, it only got better when you move on towards Update 3. Now, what I view as my personal golden age for Grand Peace Online and what some of my subscribers agree with me because I recently did ask a community post asking what you think about this and as you can see from some of the responses a good amount of people said update 3 to 3.5 but I view this as Grand Peace Online's golden age. So update 3 was the Marine Ford update and it came out April 17, 2021. What this featured was a Marine Ford Elos Island and Rough Waters, with four new bosses, two new weapons, and over 50 plus codes due to YouTuber codes. But one of the main takeaways from Update 3 that I feel like I should address at the start is the introduction of Dungeon Mode. One of the staple things in GPO and I feel like the most played mode in Grand Peace Online right now, Dungeon Mode. It was introduced in Update 3. When Dungeon Mode dropped, it was a guaranteed chance to get a fruit if you hit Wave 25, and it still is to this day. It will only give the MVP the fruit, so pretty much you can just solo a dungeon and you can get a guaranteed fruit. There was no other way to get a guaranteed fruit inside the game. You can go and grind for hours and that would still just be a chance. However, if you come to dungeons, once you hit wave 25, it's a guaranteed fruit. This mode changed kind of everything, hence why I personally call it the golden age because it's where GPO was, I feel like, at its peak, where you could come in the game every day and play it. Outside of Dungeon Mode, which I will talk a little bit more about later, you have Marine Ford, Elos Island, which was the island for the Easter event, which is happening around the time Update 3 released. You have Devil Step, pretty much Sanji's Diablo Jambe from One Piece. You also had Sea Kings. These were new bosses that just spawn randomly at the sea. It was literally sea beasts spawning inside the ocean. And then if you were able to aggro one of them, you could have a chance to get Devil Fruits and some of their very overpowered armor. You had Whitebeard boss, which was a huge boss that was announced around the whole entire server for, I guess, multiple players to come through and fight it. Overall, this update was mainly just the best, and it even introduced a new fruit, which was Gurigura no Mi, Tremor, 
most people's favorite fruit from One Piece because Whitebeard is actually a goat. However, if you just look at Update 3, you can see why I say it's the best. And it's mainly just because of Dungeon Mode. This mode, I feel like this mode is what is carrying the game overall. It is literally the best mode in Greenpeace Online. Even if you prefer PvP, which I personally do myself, you can't lie. A mode where you get guaranteed double fruits is very, very, very good. It's a really good thing. And not only that, if you look towards update 3.5, which I'm looping in as the golden age with update 3. Another thing that they added, which is another key staple point inside Grand Beast Online, is the trading hub. The trade hub still to this day is one of the best places that was ever added to Grand Beast Online. The main reason as to why the trade hub was added was because there was multiple exploiters going around at the new, at the old trade island that was in private servers and if you look at some of the clips you could see that people were literally exploiting going to the other side stealing your fruit and then you would have to get a restore and this led to some of the developers and admins being overworked because they had to do restores while also playing the game and keeping track of the players in the game overall the trade hub was a step inside the right direction because it saved a lot of people time and if you get scammed here it's partially on your fault because how do you get scammed when you have a very easy gui and easy way to put stuff in update 3.5 is definitely when i feel like gpo hit its peak if you look at some of the stuff that they were showcasing for it like gura tremor a lot of people were hyped for it even all the youtubers myself included i i personally love update 3.5 i literally feel like this was the best time to play the game Around this time, people were also discovering how to move stack and do very broken methods inside the game like afro dashing and things like that. In Arena, you would mostly run into meta builds. There was multiple YouTubers popping up around this time too who were mainly focusing around PvP like Losuki, Drag Out Combos, and even Kikuzu who doesn't really upload that much anymore but he was around this time and uploading content around Update 3. Update 3 literally was the best for GPO. The content was good, the, like, the community was very very happy with what we got, everybody was just having fun, either it was grinding or playing PvP, you was playing GPO during update 3, not only because it was the main playable game back then, but because it just put a lot of new stuff, a new feeling, a dungeon mode to a game. Well, some Roblox games do not really have that, and you could call me inexperienced or I don't play most games on the platform, if I'm ever wrong just like feel free to correct me down below into the comments. But you can kind of see why Update 3 was the best. The community was very happy. Everybody was just having fun playing the game. Trading was introduced. It literally was the best update for GPO. And with everything having its peak, you also have your lowest moments. And leading into that, we are going to go into what I personally feel like is the fall, the huge fall off for GPO. Update 4. The second C update in Grand Peace Online. Now, update 4, also known as the second C update. One thing I want to say prior to this is that the gap from update 3 to update 4 was 149 days. Within those 149 days, it was the lowest you would have ever seen GPO back then. A lot of YouTubers, including myself, were complaining. We were hopping on different games. The gap from update 3 to update 4 was way too long is what we felt like. And we truly just didn't like it. Like it was it was literally way too long of a gap. A lot of players went off and then some people actually started to stop playing GPO. And they would only say that they will play the game if there's something major that happens or if there's like a huge comeback and that the next update was good. So there was a lot of hype building up to update 4 and people wanted to see something different. We were starting to get tired of just grinding bosses, getting the new fruit and stuff like that. This is when the community started to actually take a shift and wanted original stuff as well, I would say. Moving on from that, update four, it was 149 days after update three, and it featured four new bosses, six new weapons, six new islands, and the codes. All this update really added to it was Alabasta, which is the main city into the second sea. He was also able to come from the first seed to the second seed with like a cool little mini event that you had to do involving a sea beast and getting a key. You had to come to Alabasta. There was a new fighting style, which was two sword style. 
They added Krakens, which are pretty much a direct upgrade from Sea Beast. They dropped some pretty cool armor. They added the Crab King Cho, one of the most annoying bosses to fight. And outside of that, they just added Crocodile as a boss for you to fight and a lot of stuff to farm with. That was really all of it for the content side. And two new fruits came inside this update, Suna and Gomu. Suna is personally one of my favorite legendary fruits and Gomu is pretty cool fruit. But like I've said before, I feel like this is when GPO started to go downhill because the content was just getting repetitive and it was literally just, oh, what's going to be the new grinding spot for the new update? However, update four, it just was a very lackluster update. When Gomu released, it released raw. There was no other gears for it. It's just the raw fruit Gomu. There's also two new commons added like Kilo and Spin. And outside of that, that's all update four really brought to it. Outside of the obvious balance changes to the game. They also started cracking down on all the cheese methods like drag, jump, and suki feet sucker. Stuff like that. This was the time when GPO was just heading downhill. The game was getting repetitive. They even added a new Karoo Racing minigame, which was one of the most underwhelming things agreed by the whole community. The Karoo mini race was very lackluster, and I feel like a lot of people in the community didn't like it, including myself. Only things you would get from winning the race is EXP and a 1 out of 1,000 chance to get a Devil Fruit from winning. So you like you hear how ridiculous that sounds. It was just a really bad thing to add. A lot of people didn't take this the right way. There was also Buso Hockey V2, which was a pretty big W because hockey was becoming a problem by the time of the end of update 3. Combat was changed around a little bit, leveling's faster, there's NPCs roaming around the city just to make it feel more alive. They tried to add some new type of quests for like deliveries, but it just didn't work. Like uh, the game just it was just going downhill. It was literally just grinding new fruits. And after that, everybody was like, oh, OK, that's it. Update 4.5 came with a Halloween update, which just included a boss and something else for you to farm to get a really rare drop. As you can see, it's starting to get very repetitive. A new fruit released with this Halloween update, which was Horror Horror No Me, but that wasn't enough to really help out the game. People just were getting bored of GPO. It was literally the same thing over and over again. Moving on from that though, the anniversary update was a thank you from Foyu for one year inside the game. This was one year since GPO released. What was added in the anniversary update was the observation tower and a bunch of new items like anniversary hat, shades, lantern, cap. You pretty much get what I'm trying to say. Another thing that was added was the rarest item, or well, one of the rarest items of the game, called the Prestige Candy Cane, which still goes for a lot of value to this day. Another rare item was also Prestige Fruit Bag, which you can only get if you play GPO within the first hour of it releasing. Now moving on to update 4.91, which was the Christmas update. So it was happened to be around Christmas time again, and GPO decided to do another event because they like to do this, which I fully do not mind. But this was the second Christmas event. The second Christmas event was literally the same thing again. There was a new boss called Krampus the Ravenger, and this one was kind of like a little raid event where everybody had to kind of team up and fight this. And you would just fight this boss, and then you would have to fight it for, again, exclusive items. As you can see, the game was getting very repetitive, and yeah, it was literally just the Christmas update. You had to grind for Festival Lancer, Festival Shields. That was that was really it. That was really it for the Christmas update. Moving on from that, we have update 4.951. Now this update, I feel like this is better than update 4 itself. This is probably one of people's most favorite things that was added to the game, and I fully understand why. The Valentine's update brought out Cupid Queen. This, or should I just say Cupid's Dungeon overall? What this is is a whole like theme inspired dungeon based around the cupid queen it was the valentine's event and pretty much what you would do you would go up to eight rounds inside this cupid dungeon the rounds they were they were pretty easy depending on the fruit that you had and it was literally just a cupid's dungeon as you reach round eight at the cupid dungeon you drop the random guaranteed fruit similar to regular dungeons and it was very very easy to do the community really liked this because of how easy and fast it was to solo this a lot of people were making videos you can look on youtube there were videos for each and every single fruit or style to solo cupid dungeons 
this is one of the most loved things by the community including myself because this was it was just very easy to do cupid dungeons and it was also a nice time passer now a couple of weeks to a month after cupid dungeons was done for gpo boyu actually did start doing these random events which were called the rumbling now the rumbling inside green piece online I feel like it was a pretty nice event that the community enjoyed and majority of players watching this video, even if you started playing recently, have experienced the rumbling event. What the rumbling event was, it's an event where Foyu spawns a lot of titans that were all led by him. And during the rumbling event, if you clear it within 15 minutes, you have a 4 times Logia chance, or should I say legendary fruit chance. What this basically meant is that a lot of people would team up inside servers and they would serve a hop from rumbling event to like a different server and just put their ults in to get multiple fruits. This event was also loved by the community just like Keepers Dungeon because it was a very free and good way to get double fruits. I personally like this event too and I do feel like a lot of people enjoyed the rumbling. It was a good event and it was nice for you to just do it for us a couple of while. However, outside of that, Moving off all of the good events near the ending of update 4, the wait for update 5 was a very interesting time. Foyu was starting to get very decryptive with his messages. We had gone out the final year. 8,520 hours were made. A lot of people were kind of fed up and didn't like what Foyu was doing because it was just a lot of emojis and random messages. There was not really anything going on inside the update channel outside of Foyu just showing us emojis a lot of people really didn't like this and they were just saying oh my god foe was going insane he doesn't really care about us anymore and yeah he it seemed like he was just posting whatever he wanted but this all led up to for you dropping something else for grand piece online which was mobile now mobile it wasn't anything big mobile was only implemented for trade hub only and that's really all it is it's just a mobile mode for trade hub after that, Foyu went just right back to doing what he does best. I would just say trolling. All he would do is just post the random messages and tell us to decode them for update 5. He posted images of rats with guns and farts. And, and, and yeah, it was a very cryptic, a lot of cryptic messages for Grand Peace Online. A lot of cryptic messages. Outside of all of Foyu's trolling though, we eventually reached the day where update 5 was going to come out for Grand Peace Online. Moving on from update 4 though and all of the sneak peeks that Foyu was posting in his little coded messages, we finally released update 5 also known as the Thriller Bark update. Now what update 5 introduced was Thriller Bark and Foro Island. Update 5 introduced a lot of new bosses like Ryuma, Borge, Moria, and they even introduced a C event, which is very good. For the C event, there's two different types. They have a regular and a rockstar event, which has a 10% chance of spawning, and it drops multiple different things. They added multiple new weapons, new items, and combust cosmetics that just make the game play better, like Bomi's log pose. One of the best items inside the game, to this day, all seeing eye. It is a tradable double fruit notifier revamp, and what you will do if you have it is it gives you permanent two times logia and it tells you exactly what fruit spawns and where it spawns at it is a really really good item and if you bought the infant notifier before then you would have this item it also introduced a devil fruit journal which just keeps track of all the devil fruits you have multiple zombie outfit armors etc you pretty much get it update 5 bought in a lot of new stuff moving on to the fruits this update the fruits like yomi mochi kage and paul were all introduced Mochi is the second ever mythical inside the game to Grand Peace Online, just like Tori. And with all these new fruits introduced, they all are very, very well liked by the community. It's really good fruits. Some other additions that came with Update 5 with Observation Hockey V2. Just like Buso Hockey V2, Observation Hockey V2 is a direct upgrade that allows you to weave much more stuff. And if you pair this up with Mochi, you get a special dodge and it pretty much is like a Logia bar, but you can't take any stun. And there was much more added to this update, like a complete revamp on the trading system. Well, not the trading system, but a complete revamp on the trading hub. For the trading system, all they did was just make it so you could show up past 500 trades and they did add a new map. Another thing that they added was private server codes. With these, you can now server lock and unlock your server. It was just a bunch of quality of life updates to GPO. They even changed some of the fruit models too. Update 5 
was definitely a step inside the right direction. With all of the balance patches, you had multiple people coming back for the game for a while. After a while, people do say that each update is an L because you go through the content very easily, but the community did like update 5 way more than update 4. Update 4 was so far the worst taken update by the community. Update 4 so far is definitely the update that the community took the worst just because of how lackluster it was and how repetitive the game was actually starting to get. Some other things that came in future updates for update 5, like update 5.3, this was the free release. What this brought out was just new variants for a mink and stuff like that. It was very small changes that started like some balances. And this leads us to where we currently are right now for Grand Peace Online. And besides that, there were just some minor things that were also added to the game. Like there was the AFK zone right now. They did some changes to the double fruit notifier. Pretty much, this is exactly where we are right now, and that is going to conclude the history of Grand Peace Online. Please let me know if I forgot something inside the comments, because I promise you, I definitely can get something. So just let me know if I got something wrong inside the comments. I'm open for criticism. Also, let me know what you think of this video. I really do want to like just talk about the history of GPO up to where we are right now, where we're literally about to get a battle royale mode, which just sounds crazy. And outside of that, let me know what your favorite update was inside the comments. And yo, let's aim for 400. Yeah, 400 likes on this video, bro. Bro, I'm not gonna lie. Y'all have been killing it with the like, oh, like for real, I, I actually appreciate that. Every single time I ask just to hit like 300 likes, you always hit it. So, yo, bro, thank you. Thank you for that. Like, I really, really do appreciate it. So thanks for watching this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end. And um, yeah, hopefully update six is fast and good for the history thingy.